530-8003. That's 530-8003. Jessup Premium Storage. Be cool, clean, and secure. When you have an accident, you, not the insurance company, chooses the body shop, and you only need one estimate. All you have to do is call Jerome Riles at BNC Collision Center in downtown Scriven to deal with the adjusters and insurance company. Whether it's a little ding or a major crash, that BNC Collision Center across from Watson Cabinet Shop in Scriven deal with the insurance company so you don't have to. Call them at 579-2274. That's 579-2274. If you're looking for the best looking truck on the road today, stop the search and come to Mike Birch Ford and Blackshear. Drive, push, tow, or haul your trade, and we'll give you top money for it. We will give you $10,000 off on selected new 2015 Ford F-150s at Mike Birch Ford. Or save you thousands at 0% interest for 60 months. 2015 Ford F-150s, save up to $10,000 or finance at 0% for 60 months. Come to the house, get service built, buy a new Ford, and get free oil and filter changes during your 36,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty. Timmy Rozier, Joey Lee, Gerald Stone, Bart Duncan, Tracy Ross, or Randy Williamson are ready to help you. Remember, $10,000 off for 0% for 60 months on selected 2015 Ford F-150s. This is Sammy Dixon saying thank you. Thank you very much for your business. Stop the search and come to Mike Birch Ford or go to MikeBirchFord.com and shop till you drop. And good morning to you, Thursday morning, 5th day of November. Butch Hubbard here with you on WIFO-FM in Jessup, 105.5 on your FM dial. Yeah, we're going to have, uh, well, kind of cloudy skies today, a high today of 83 degrees. The Yadamaha River level is at 4.9 feet and rising. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by Parker Insurance and Realty on Macon Street in downtown Jessup. By Jessup Premium Storage out here on the Waycross Highway, BNC Collision Center in Scriven, and also brought to you by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. And Bob, we've got a studio full of folks here this morning. Yeah, including the mayor of Odom. The mayor <laughs> of Odom. Odom. Mr. Nippers in the studio. How are you doing, Mr. Mayor? I'm doing fine. Glad to be with y'all this morning. Appreciate y'all letting us come in and talk with y'all this morning. The school's right. still coming up nicely in Odom. It is coming along very nicely. They are uh, got block walls up around the structural steel. We actually start roofing the end of this week, so they're moving. They're progressing quite well. Yeah, a lot of excitement for the city of Bowdoin. They're going to have that school ready next year. That's good. That's what they want to do. The teachers are really excited. I talked with the kids uh, about the government last week, and all the teachers are really excited about the building coming up and the speed it's coming at, and Great. they're ready to move in. Yeah. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about a church event. we got the Reverend Jack Lee in. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Just glad you're having us here today, and we're just talking about our turkey shoot. It's going right. to be uh, November the 7th, this Saturday. And, and uh, uh, just for folks who don't know you, you have Reverend Jack Lee, the pastor at Omaha Baptist Church, and you've got an event coming up on Saturday, right? Right. Turkey shoot. We're working towards uh, supporting our mission trip to Haiti, and uh, y'all have us quite often to come on, and we appreciate that very much. And we're going to have a fun time at Ian and Elaine Green's home off of Holmesville Road. Uh, if you've ever been to a turkey shoot, you ought to come out and see what it is. It's uh, kind of a family thing, and uh, prizes to be won, and just... Uh, We'll have food prepared and hot dogs, hamburgers, and things for the kids to do. So it's going to be a great time. Okay. Once again, it begins at what time Saturday? Four o'clock. Four o'clock till, till nine. Till nine. Or till. It depends on how everybody's shooting and what kind of prizes are left. Okay. And uh, I know that the uh, the, the uh, announcement you'll have running says guns will be provided. That's correct. And uh, I might let Brian talk more about the gun part. With that, you're talking about guns to shoot with, we'll yes. have those also, but you can also bring your own gun, but it just gets put in the rack uh, with all the other guns that are furnished, and any gun that's brought, anyone can use it. Okay. It makes it fair for everybody. Ten four. All right, so anybody, if you bring your gun, other folks can use it also. That's correct. That's, okay. that's standard rules for a turkey shoot. All right, is it going to be just um, shotgun? Yeah, it's just shotgun. Um, we uh, have a, a throwing targets that we'll throw. And then we have a, um, uh, a target that you shoot at that has a little hole in. If you get your pellet to go through that hole and bust that line on the other side, you get to win something there. And you also have steel targets that you'll put up on a post and uh, you shoot at that. And, of course, the uh, person who's closest to the bullseye is the winner. Okay, now on the uh, competition there, are the people who are th um, shooting against the ones that are being thrown going to be against the same folks at the same time against the steel targets? Yeah, you have a choice. You can eat. Some people like to, to, to the competition of throwing the target, but that goes on the same time the steel target. 
the, the stationary targets okay. are being done. So you find, found out folks who hit uh, moving targets can have just as good a chance as one that shoots at one that's just sitting there on. That's correct. You know, it, it's 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 uh, it's the skill and it's of course it's luck. It's luck with the shotgun yeah. pellets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, But you never know when the patterns have the same gun are, are different from shot to shot. Sometimes, okay. but sometimes they're consistent, and sometimes they're really close. I mean, you gotta get magnifying glass out to find out who's the closest. How many folks do you, will you think you'll have in each round of the turkey shoot? We have what twenty. At least 20, 20, 20, 20 people in a round. In a yeah. round. And, uh, and how quickly do the rounds move along? About once every 30 minutes? Or how does uh, it work? Close to that. The longer the night goes, the slower people get. But when you first get there, <laughs> everybody's really excited and they're ready to go. And, and it's just going how many times they like to go through. And we have the same people shoot, you know, 10 or 15 times. So, oh, yeah. yeah. It's and, a lot of fun. you got a lot of prizes we're giving away. Um, Are the know, prizes for the top winners or other prizes to be given away? Prizes for the for the winners not only do you we have rounds where you win either a ham or bacon or, yeah. or turkey actually mm -hmm. that you can get from rick's meat uh just get a card so you can just turn that in okay and you also uh, have rounds where we shoot for guns oh so okay the top person gets still the, three bucks or there's gonna be more per round what is it this year i'm not sure we, what that price is uh, well, so it's gonna be yeah. a little bit different i'm yeah, imagine for, yeah, that, for the gun it goes up a little bit i also get i think it's uh three guns and a yeti cooler that we're giving away oh wow that's yeah. gonna be that's gonna be fun right there yeah. so I, and i i want to say that, that those particular ones are is it 20 bucks i think it's 20 bucks so shotgun. for 20 dollars you win a brand new shotgun rifle 22 or um a yeti cooler so okay. it's not a very bad investment and it's three dollars per round and you can shoot as many rounds as you like right that's correct I'd mentioned y'all before when y'all been on here. We used to do a turkey shoot at the Bellies Farm out there, the Big Red Farm out here on mm -hmm. Highway uh, 84 back in the late 60s with David Bailey and the gang out there. And it was a dollar per round. So if it's three dollars today, that's actually less in real money than it was back then. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so, with the cost of shells and everything that going up, we're uh, that's still a pretty good bargain. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty, pretty good bargain yeah, right there. That's exactly right. Yeah, we're really blessed to have a lot of people donate mm -hmm. their time, donate uh, money to this, uh, donate the guns, the, the cooler. Um, just can't thank everybody enough for that. So we'd like to get everybody to come out, and the more people have, the more successful we are for this mission trip that we're, we're doing. And that's what it's all about is a mission trip, getting the money up to help the people in Haiti. Okay, okay, now, for folks that are going to this on Saturday, to the turkey shoot on, uh, by Audubonha Baptist Church, you, let's just say you turn down Holmesville Road here uh, here on Highway 84, and you head down Holmesville Road. How far is it down before you get to Odom Scriven Road? It's about 6.2 miles. 6.2 miles, but and so it's very close to the other end before you right. get to the Odom Scriven Road, right? We're going to have signs up, and you'll be able to see the signs of where it points down Ammon Scott's Road, and when you go right on Ammon Scott if you're coming from 84 mm -hmm. you'll go down that maybe a quarter of a mile and it'll be right on the left you can't miss it okay and um, another thing is we have a, uh, we have a shop for the youth too and we have four tens and smaller shotguns out there for uh, the kids to do it so that's a fun time for them okay. and uh, that helps out a lot to get and what do you consider youth age uh, probably we're talking about 10 and above I'm just not you know we have to, we have to look yeah, yeah, ten and below. We have to look below. Okay. We have to look to see who's who's there and what kind of group we okay. can put them in. All right. So all this is going to be going on for all those hours. Uh, food's going to be available for purchase, also, right? That's correct. We will have uh, sausage dogs, regular hot dogs, hamburgers, okay. and drinks, and chips. Right. Well, you've got another guest here with you. I mean, he's just sitting there, you know, yeah. looking pretty. So <laughs> what's he going to talk about? Well, uh, Devin Dixon is our children's minister at Autumn Hall Baptist. He, and he's been on one of our Haiti, or several of our Haiti trips. But he's going to share with us a few things about what we do at Haiti. Okay. Yeah, Haiti's a great. And your uh, name, once again, please? My name's Devin Mixon. David. Uh, Devin. Devin Mixon. Okay. And Haiti's a, I went a, about a year ago, a couple of years ago. And um, it's a life-changing experience um, just to see. Uh, the difference of living here and, living, and those living there. I'll tell you just one, one real quick uh, thing that happened there. We had a kid that broke his arm, and over there in Haiti, you don't have like uh, walk in clinics and stuff like you do here, well, or even emergency rooms uh, that are close by. But it, kid broke his arm, happened to just work out where an orthopedic surgeon was coming by to see someone else, came by. And I got the privilege, me and Ian Green got the privilege, actually, of helping to reset the bone in his arm by pulling on his hands Ooh. and his, and his um, elbow. And we just happened that year to take also casting material to cast his arm. And it was perfect the way it worked out. Great. 
it was just neat to see that experience that in a world so far away, but yet you're doing so great a work and how God worked those things together was really amazing. Okay. But All right, so, so the Haiti trip, what are y'all going uh, next? We we February the 6th. February 6th down to Haiti? Okay. Yeah, we'll be going a week. And then we have another group from uh, Louis First Baptist. They'll be going the 13th through the 20th. And they're they're kind of doing their own thing as far as uh, receiving funds for that. But we're just the first time we've actually had two teams go for two weeks. And I think that's going to be great. we got a couple of ladies that are actually leaving a week earlier. They're going to work a medical clinic for a week before we get there. And then we have one individual that's going to take, stay for two weeks. And so it's um, just uh, so many ways to which you can serve and different opportunities. Uh, Jack, when y'all go down there, uh, where do y'all stay? What kind of facilities and how many people do y'all have? And how does that work out for y'all from a logistical standpoint? We stay at uh, what is St. Ard in uh, Haiti. It's a compound and it's also a uh, an orphanage. And uh, so uh, it's like a three-story block building, open air uh, at the top. And everybody sleeps on the same floor, and uh, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it could be a lot worse. We could be in the tent on the ground, so we're grateful for that. And uh, one of the biggest achievements lately is there's a restroom that was put up at the third floor. Ah, yeah, because we have to walk down three flights to get to the restroom. Okay. So it's but it's fun. Uh, you know, you grow uh, really solid friendships and just uh, come together and understand that uh, God's in the work of all things, and He's using us to do a work that's going last for eternity all right you know when folks say hey they go down to haiti for a week but what do you do during the day while you're down there i know there's, there's got to be activities planned in advance is that right what do you do while you're down there each day um we have different projects the last couple of times we actually built uh, uh, some houses now we don't do all the work ourselves but we do we do help out the local population because they're really crafted in what they do especially when you start laying uh, block and um, stone. Everything they do down there is about as opposite as what we do up here. Um, but they're real good at it, <laughs> truthfully. Um, and we have to kind of adapt to what they do. We do okay. some things and they say, why are you doing this? And uh, that's not how we do it. But anyhow, uh, we built the pastor um, a two-story house, which is very large for a Haiti um, project. It took us two years to do it. Um, and that's just two trips for us, and there were other uh, missionary groups also helped. But you, you wonder why would a pastor, hey, you need a, a two-story house? It's probably about 5,000 square foot, to be quite honest with you. But he houses probably 20 people regularly, um, be orphans or uh, missionary, other missionary people. Um, pastors had pastor conference down there. And when you have a pastor's conference in Haiti, there's 200, 300 people show up for the pastor conference. They're all pastors. And you know how they get there. They walk. Okay. Or take a tap tap. Now, there's, you know, Haiti, a lot of folks have been throughout the country, the world, been going to Haiti for the past several years, uh, uh, you know, doing work down there. I guess there's still a really big need there, even though you've had, you know, thousands and thousands of people go down there and help and ton, you know, hundreds of thousands of man hours. You know, um, we, we pray for Haiti. We pray for third world countries. America is really blessed is what we have and the resources we have and, and, and the way we use our resources and how we think. The, the way we think is, you know, we got something in front of us and we want to see how to get to the end. Well, we actually have thought about how to get to the end before we start a project. In Haiti, you can drive around anywhere you want to and you'll see house after house after house that was started. I mean, there'll be uh, columns sticking up, rebar on the top of them, it'd be block walls four foot high. Mm -hmm. A lot of the problem they have over there is they just don't think their project out far enough. Uh -huh. It's real scarce, scarce. So they come in, they do what they can, thinking they're going to come back, and a lot of times they just don't come back. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of abandoned, partially built homes there. Okay. So you ought to be down there in February for a week doing mission work at Audubon Baptist Church. How many folks will y'all take, uh, Reverend? We're taking yeah. 12 with us uh, this time, okay. and then the other team's taking 12, and then we count the other three that are coming in different times. So that's a pretty good group, good workable group. Yep. And uh, so that that keeps us uh, where we don't have anybody standing around. Uh, so it is a, it's a blessing to see us come together. And when we get to those 12 coming, we've got a team that will do the cooking. We've got a team that does cleanup and things like that. And then we just uh, work towards breaking up and going different sites or different projects okay. that are before us. Okay. 
what town are y'all in? Actually, there's uh, Cabaretta, there's St. Ard, and there's several others. Uh, you, you know, in some places, their population is so close, you're moving from one spot into another, you don't know you've left one town. Oh, okay. And the, is the, the language down there Spanish? No, it's, it's uh, uh, French Creole. French Creole, okay. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound interesting. There's yes. a, uh, one area down there is called City Blue, and um, it started out as just tents, and just blue tents, and that's where everybody lived. And over the years, missionary groups come through and build a home, so they get to move from a tent to actually a home that has uh, block walls and, and a metal roof. Okay. And we actually built one of them uh, the year before. We've built a couple of churches down there. Uh, and, and it's just not us doing all the work. There's a number of uh, missionary groups that come in over the years that, that help finish these projects out. Okay. Exactly. All right. So, Alamo Hot Baptist Church uh, raising funds for their trip to Haiti for mission work uh, in February. But Saturday, starting at 4 o'clock. That's correct. Starting off from 4 to 9 o'clock, turkey shoot out at uh, the Greens uh, Farm uh, and uh, on Holmesville Road. And, um, folks, we encourage you to go out. Any other, uh, let's go over the details once again of the turkey shoot, uh, Jack, and uh, so folks, in case they just tuned in, okay? Okay, we're having the turkey shoot to help uh, raise funds for our Haiti mission trip. Uh, it's uh, down Holmesville Road, uh, turn right on Ammon Scott if you're coming from 84, 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, you can bring your own gun, you put it in the rack with the other guns. We do provide guns. There'll be th uh, food to be uh, eaten and purchased, and then you'll have, uh, we'll do rounds for uh, things like uh, sausage, and hamburgers or hot dogs as far as things like that and then we'll do the big rounds for guns and coolers okay four to seven o'clock this saturday um and if there's a phone number or a website they can go to if they need more information about it anything of that sort they can go to uh five eight six six seven eight oh or say it again please five eight six six seven eight oh okay or two nine four oh nine eight seven okay sounds good bob any questions comments for pastor reverend jack lee this morning no? Okay. Anything for the mayor of Odom? It's just always good to see the mayor. You're always good Thank to see you, the mayor. Appreciate, appreciate <laughs> like we we are looking for somebody to help throw the targets in there. That's probably one of the most dangerous things to do. If you, uh -huh. know, you want to go volunteer to do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the line would be long for folks wanting to shoot. The target probably wouldn't even get hit. <laughs> They'd be shooting low. I'm actually giving up going to watch the Georgia game to, to do this. And, uh, they'll probably win this weekend since I'm not there. Okay. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Thank you. All, all right. Good luck. 105.5 FM and Jeff's at Big Dog Country, WIFO. we got another guest coming up here on the Butch and Bob Show in one minute. Friday, November 6th, J.C. Landing, 7 p.m. It's Rhythm on the River featuring the Second Chance Band. Oh, Tickets, $15. Combo Fair Concert Tickets, $20. Rhythm on the River. Featuring the Second Chance Band. Also appearing third class citizen. If she ever comes back to Gates open at 6. Rhythm on the River. Featuring the Second Chance Band. Friday, November 6th at JC Landing. Don't miss it. Are you looking for help with your investment decisions? By contacting me, Shauna Quinn, your local country financial representative here in Jessup, you'll get both personal service and comprehensive professional expertise. I will review your investment goals and risk tolerance and provide you with a recommended asset allocation. Investments are selected and monitored by expert portfolio managers for you based on that allocation. Discover how easy it can be with just a call to me, Shauna Quinn, your country financial representative at 588-1051. Investment products and services offered by Country Trust Bank, a part of Country Financial Bank. Products and services are not FDIC insured and not guaranteed and are subject to investment risk. Okay, just got a text in here. If you have any questions or comments during the Butch and Bob show or any time during the day, you can always text us at 912-427-3711. And it says here on this text right here, uh, it's from Wayne Memorial Hospital. It says, good morning. Uh, please remind people today is the last day to buy barbecue for a cure chicken plates from Wayne Memorial Hospital. The Wayne Memorial Hospital, the plates are just $10, and uh, tickets may be purchased by calling 530-3118, 530-3118. You can call today. Uh, the event occurs on November 12th when you'll be able to pick up those plates. All proceeds benefit Relay for Life. For more details, go to Wayne Memorial Hospital website, which is wmhweb.com, wmh web.com Wade Morals uh, Facebook page and their Twitter page okay getting that in for the hospital right there all right Bob we've got another guest here this morning 
Yep, we got the DDA director, Micah Kickwater, here and talking Christmas. Good morning. Good morning, Micah. I'm so excited to be talking about Christmas. I love Christmas time, and I can't wait for it to be here. Um, we've got a lot of things. DDA has been working very hard. Uh, it's been one thing after another, and um, after Archfest, um, which I will say we were very successful, and I hope everyone had a great time. I know um, we all did, and the committee did. We found a little bit of time to have some fun the day of Archfest, so I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, but we've got on um, so this is next Friday and Saturday, November 13th and 14th. This is the Downtown Merchants Christmas Open House. So it's not the tree lighting ceremony. Um, the children's choirs aren't singing or anything like that. It's just our Merchants Open House. So um, if you have time, stop by their stores on Friday. Um, it's regular store hours, so 10 to 6, and then Saturday from 9 to 4, um, they'll be kind of showcasing their holiday collections and holiday decor, and it's just a time for them to be able to um, show off that stuff before December actually gets here. Um, so that's happening, and that's also the kickoff of our um, Buy Local cards. So we did that during Archfest, which was also extremely successful, um, and we'll start that again on Friday the 13th, and uh, we'll actually draw for the the winner of that card at the tree lighting ceremony, which is on December 3rd. So that way, um, whoever wins can actually use that before Christmas. If they wanted to buy Christmas gifts, they could do so. Um, so we've got that coming up, um, which is again, Friday, November 13th and Saturday, November 14th um, is Merchants Open House. And then we've also got on uh, November 20th and 21st, um, when we had Santa was in here a couple weeks ago about it, I just want to remind people, Rhonda Landon Photography, um, they will be set up in the depot. And if you bring one unwrapped toy, you get to um, visit with Santa and you get a one four by six print for free. Um, and this is to benefit the Wayne County Toy Drive. So this is something that City Hall is um, currently working on right now and I just wanted to put a plug out there and go ahead and say we are accepting do uh, toys donations monetary donations and we talked about it yesterday up at City Hall and we could even use things like trash bags um, we have to bag them to give to the families and trash bags are expensive especially when we I think last year we talked about it um, yesterday we serviced about a thousand children last year mm -hmm. so when you think of having to buy a thousand trash bags, what size trash um, bags? the big I think it's like 48 Gallon. Is it the, lawn, the and, lawn and leaf? Yeah, it's the really big, big ones. Big. Not ones you put in your trash can at home. Right, it's a, but the part, real of the big lawn, ones. part of the lawn one for yards. Yes, yeah. and the black ones, so you can't yeah. see through them. Um, but we are accepting toys right now, and um, we'll accept them all the way up until, and even throughout the whole year, um, we start getting in some toys and put them downstairs. So, um, again, I mean, we um, give toys to a thousand children, right. um, and, and that's a lot. So, we are accepting toys. Um, Trash bags. What do you say? The, the city. Yes, right? the city. Mm -hmm. Now, have any um, places put up around town for the toy we drive? We are working on that. Okay, yes. You're working on that. So, um, Who's Tracy, making up the toy drive this year? Tracy Smith. Tracy uh, Smith. City Hall. Okay. And I'm going to try and get her in here to talk more about it. Okay. Um, I just wanted to put that in there um, because that's something else going on. So, um, November 20th and 21st from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., um, they will be, Rhonda Landon will be doing uh, pictures of Santa. So, bring in your unwrapped toy. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm going to read this text. Okay. 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 It says, your show sounds so good with a female voice. How about the world famous Butch, Bob, and Micah show? You know what? I agree. I have been out here enough. I completely agree. <laughs> no, I enjoy coming on the show, so you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Um, we've also got, let's see what else we got, um, November 26th and 27th. So that's when our um, downtown merchants do Thanksgiving sales. So they'll be open, um, I believe, on Thanksgiving Day from 4 to 8 that night. Mm -hmm. And then um, the day after, it will be regular business hours. So they'll be doing their Thanksgiving sales. And again, those buy local cards will still be um We'll still have those out so people can still do that. Um, and then November 28th is something new. Um, it's Small Business Saturday. So this is kind of an initiative led by American Express that is all across the country um, to shop in your small businesses on Small Business Saturday. And this year it happens to be um, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. So it's November 28th. And I got a couple packages in from American Express um, that tote bags and balloons and banners and all kinds of things um, to encourage people to shop in our small businesses. And it's not just downtown businesses, it's supporting any small business, you know, in our community. Um, so again, that's November 28th, Small Business Saturday. 
And then last but not least, um, we've got our regular tree lighting ceremony will be December 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Um, and then the 5th is the Christmas parade. So okay. I just wanted, we have a lot coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, like I said, DDA, we are frantically working. Um, I did not realize how close we were to all of this because I've been so focused on Archfest, so it kind of snuck up on me. But uh, we've got a lot of things planned, a lot of exciting things, and Santa will be here, Mrs. Claus will be here um, in a couple weeks. So, um, well, please your all that information. Yes, I so will. It. And okay. it'll be on our Facebook page. I'll upload it on that, and then also on the city's website. City's website. Exactly. Now, uh, all that's coming up, but let's yes. just kind of talk about the Arch Fest. That was your okay. first time of really of, of being involved and all that kind of good stuff like that. Yes. What was your thoughts and feelings afterwards? Comments, questions that folks had, things yeah. of that sort. Uh, well, a good thing is I haven't really heard anything negative. The only negative thing we've heard about is parking, um, and that is always an issue downtown. Really, just parking away. It just, doesn't hurt to walk a couple blocks. It's just a, yeah, it was a bad issue, and mm -hmm. um, parking and handicap parking. So we're as a committee, we've all heard it. And so we're going to make sure we address that um, okay. in our, we're going to have a kind of a follow-up, a wrap-up meeting in the next couple of weeks um, with the committee of things that we like, things we didn't like. Okay. Um, but I thought it was great. I heard a lot of positive things about our kids' area. People really love that. Um, Five dollars to enter and they can do it all day and they can leave and they can come back. And so people really like that. So thanks to Teen Challenge for heading all of that up. And people also love the pumpkins. And if you go downtown, um, we displayed some of the painted pumpkins that kids painted um during the day and i know i know for a fact zip line was a huge success because oh, that yeah, line definitely. was five miles long <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, i know people love that and um our petting zoo was great um next year i think we may move in they want to come back and they've mm -hmm. already talked to me about that they they can actually be on the pavement they'll just lay chips or whatever it is on the ground right. mm -hmm. and uh they said that they would love to be moved closer to everything else that's going on okay. um but i mean people i think Did you have people it. enter in every single competition grease pole all that kind of stuff yes oh my gosh the grease pole climb had like 25 people actually oh wow <laughs> and i tried to climb it and i could and what it. happened you just slide down yes i got yeah i just got a, a couple feet off the ground and then it fell off <laughs> okay <laughs> i don't have upper body strength but uh they won free t-shirts so we had like a list of 20 25 people okay. that um got that some people cheated and they parents picked them up oh they picked them up <laughs> and then they could ring the bell oh that's not right <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay they got a free shirt anyways i think they were little kids i know it didn't matter but um what about had, the kiss the pig oh kiss the pig was great and okay. bob i've got your picture joey finally uploaded this picture so we've got a great picture bob um, kissing the pig. All right, I'll um, pucker up. So there. we'll post. We'll make sure to post those and get okay. you a copy of those. Right. <laughs> but kissing the pig was a huge success. We did, um, with the exception of one jar that we have not counted, um, we raised off of kiss the pig one thousand, I think two hundred and fifteen dollars or two hundred twenty five dollars. Wow. Mm -hmm. So for thousand dollars that we raised. So thank you to the community for um, throwing your change into those. It added up quickly. Okay, and your thoughts on the barbecue contest? Barbecue contest. You know, I had a little bit. Matt brought me a plate, and uh, I had a bite, and it was great. That's all I had time to eat. So I heard good things. People love the barbecue. Um, I think the barbecue competition went very well. Okay. Um, and I think people liked that it was just the backyard barbecue. It wasn't the really big trucks. Okay. And, and that sort of, it was people they knew um, doing that. And uh, Cornhole Tournament went well. Um, we had our winners. I don't remember them off the top of my head, but um, that went well. I played in it, and it was a lot of fun. I lost, so I was kind of uh, upset. But any comments from the merchants downtown? Oh, well, our merchants, um, I – positive things. Good. Um, we did the Buy Local Cars, which was um, a huge, huge success. And um, – Actually, the winner shopped at Best Kept Secret, and she spent the minimum amount there was fifty dollars. So she okay. spent fifty, and she won five hundred dollar gift card to cool. Best Kept Secret. So um, it was a huge success. I uh, we collected all of them with the exception of some, and then um, give or take, you know, there's some people that don't reach the minimum amount, but they still spent some money in the store. Cool. So I was eager to see how much money was actually spent downtown, and we cleared about ten thousand dollars that got okay. spent. Um, in the stores downtown. So I would say that was very successful. Okay. And we had some vendors actually tell Tracy that they thought that people shopped more in our downtown stores than they did at the vendors' um, tables. So um, for us, that's successful. And vendors will always come, and they'll always kind of come and go at festivals, but our downtown merchants are there. Um, so I was excited to hear that people were actually spending money in the stores. 
Um, and I think the, the buy local cards, that's a little bit of an incentive for people to go in because they have a chance to win a ton of money to that store. So. Right, right. I'm glad to see that uh, folks were shopping inside the stores. And the and the bingo, did you have a lot of participation in the yes, bingo? In the yes, yes. Bingo went very well. Miss Rosie said that, um, you know, it's, it's your normal, it's the usual folks that come and, and do bingo every year. So it was her normal crowd that was there. Okay, and, 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 uh, got the, and then the cakewalk. Yes, lots the cakewalk was great. Lit, lots of cakes, they were all gone by the end of the day. So, okay. And if you ask Miss Francis, I think they had a blast over there. And I didn't okay. get a chance to participate in it, but. Um, I okay. think we had a lot of fun. Are you going to be back next week to talk? Uh, uh, are you going to have a regular setup to talk about all these Christmas things coming up in downtown Jessup over the next several weeks? I can now. Okay, good. <laughs> all right, Bob, any other questions or comments from Micah this morning? <coughs> Sounds good. Anything else, Micah? Nope, I think I'm good. All right, you're heading out for a day for Wayne? Yeah, it's day for Wayne. I got my boots on. Got your boots on, yeah, ready to go. Ready I plan to go. on going out there. I'm excited. Matt's already out there. Just shoot some ski, so. Okay, be careful. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> All right. Bob, you heading out day for Wayne, too, I'm sure. Going for lunch. Going for lunch. <laughs> Going for the Always thinking about is the food. food. It's always about the food with Bob. All right. The World Famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. By Jesse Premium Storage in downtown Jessup on Bacon Street across from the Heritage Bank. Jesse Premium Storage out here on the way across Highway, uh, Highway BNC Collision Center. Mike Birch Ford. All those folks making this uh, Butch and Bob Show possible. Right here on 105.5 FM and just a big dog country, WIFO. And uh, coming up in just a moment here, we're going to have, um, let's see here, we've got uh, news from Fox News Radio coming up at uh, 8.30. Come one, come all to the annual Jessup J.C. Fair, Tuesday, November 3rd through Saturday, November 7th, 6 until 11 p.m. night at the J.C. Fairgrounds on Highway 84. Tickets are $10 per person, including all rides. Tuesday, November 3rd is family night. Enjoy a discounted admission of $8 and classic cars. Thursday night, be entertained by Gina's Gems and Line Dance Fever. It's the Jessup J.C. Fair, Tuesday, November 3rd through Saturday, November 7th, 6 until 11 p.m. nightly. Come enjoy all the exciting rides to Delicious food and games. Ten dollars admission at the Jessup J.C. Fair with Dixie Land Carnival Company. Visa, Mastercard, and Discover accepted at the ticket booth. For more information, call two nine four six one nine one. We're at seventy one degrees here in southeast Georgia. Cloudy today with a high today near eighty three. The Audubon River levels of four point nine feet and rising. It is eight thirty. Let's check in with the latest news from Fox News Radio right here on Big Dog Country Radio. <laughs> News Radio. I'm Dave Anthony. Was that Russian plane bombed out of the sky? The U.S. thinks that's a strong possibility. Britain agrees. Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond. We are now advising against all but essential travel by air through Sharm El Sheikh Airport. So flights from the U.K. are canceled. Fox's Jess Gallagher is live in our Middle East Bureau. Dave, Cairo and Moscow are dismissing suggestions by Britain and the U.S. that a bomb most likely caused the Metrojet airliner to crash in the Sinai Desert, killing all 224 people on board. A spokesman for Russian President Vladimir Putin says investigators are working on all possible theories, but it's speculatory to name just one. Meanwhile, Egypt's antiquities minister supports Moscow, saying everyone must wait for the result of the investigation. Cairo officials have also condemned Britain's travel ban as an overreaction. Dave. Jessica, in the crash of a cargo plane in South Sudan that killed 36 people, it turns out the pilot was not authorized to carry passengers. A baby was the only survivor. A four-year-old girl in Oakland, Maine, has lost her parents murdered in their home last night along with another woman by a gunman who then shot and killed himself the little girl was found alive inside a six-year-old boy is dead in louisiana and state police want to know why fox's tanya j powers is on the case live six-year-old jeremy martis was riding in the car with his father chris few when marksville city marshals were trying to serve the dad a warrant on tuesday night the marshals chased few's vehicle police say he reached a dead end and backed into the marshals they fired on the car hitting the boy in the head and chest. Louisiana State Trooper Scott Moreau says they're trying to fill in the gaps. I know it was more than one officer involved. There was